Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail Soldier Athletes of the U.S. Army. Title: Finishing Kick. This is the story of the finely trained, physically fit men who, under the guidance of the Army's off-duty athletic program, have developed into outstanding athletes who, by their stamina, skill, and competitive fire, are giving distinguished performances on playing fields all over the world. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, what's your interest? Is it radio, photography, motor mechanics, metalwork? If you'd like to learn a highly skilled, well-paid trade like pharmacy, watch repairs, photography, motor mechanics, or electronics, there's no better place to learn than in the United States Army. The Army offers training in dozens of highly specialized jobs, jobs that will pay you well for the rest of your life. Many veterans have already used their Army training and experience to build profitable careers for themselves out of the skills the Army taught them. You can do the same. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Talk it over and find out what's in it for you when you serve your country as an American soldier. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Finishing Kick. Lower. A little lower. That's it, Red. Ah, now, come in weaving. Oh, you're telegraphing that jab, Red. A blind man could see it coming. Ah, that's better. Much better. Now, keep moving in. Oh, move in. Red's coming along pretty good, isn't he, Sergeant? Oh, hello, Mason. Didn't see you there for a minute. Yeah, sure, Red's doing okay. He sure is. Hey, you haven't missed a session in all the after-duty hours training. Interested in boxing, Mason? Well, Red's a friend of mine. I couldn't box if I tried. I... I just like to watch. Come on, get up on your toes, Red, as high as you can go. Well, you can't tell what you're good at unless you try. Oh, I'm no boxer, I know that. Well, I've watched you jog along with Red during the road work on Saturdays. You've been a free and easy stride. Like you're not even pushing. You ever think of going off the track? Well, I enjoy the road work because Red's a friend of mine, but I'm no track man. How can you tell, Mason? Well, I'm not much good at anything. Just a watcher, that's all. Okay, Red, call it a day. Take your road work. Another mile to go, Dan. Gets easier all the time. Sergeant Jameson says you're doing all right, Red. Yeah, I'm in the best condition of my life. You take this road work like Grant took Richmond. Oh, it doesn't bother me. I could go all day. Well, I got a win on Friday. It'll give me a shot at the U.S. Army and Europe Championships. And after that, Dan, who knows? Crack at NATO. Oh, you'll make it, Red. You got what it takes. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Keep talking. Makes me feel good. Hey, there's the water tower. Want to sprint the last 50 yards? Let's go. Hey. You really poured it on, Dan. Left me standing still. Well, you're a fighter, not a runner, Red. Maybe you're not a fighter, but you certainly can't move in a hurry. Okay, what's next on the program? Back to the gym for a little more workout. Okay, Red. See you in the barracks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was 
Yeah, where would Abbott be without Costello? Oh, sure, I know, wise guy. Do you know? Let Batso alone. He knows what he's talking about. Thanks, buddy. All I'm saying is that Lieutenant Lacey changed Caldwell from a bump to a champ by showing him how to control his slider. Caldwell used to wild pitch himself out every game he started. Well, what's so unusual about that? Lieutenant Lacey used to pitch in the big league. All I'm saying is... You know, that's the trouble, Fatso. You're always saying something. Uh, What's what's the matter, Fatso? The boy's giving you a hard time. Uh, No, not me. I'm immune. They want to take in the show, Dan? Oh, not tonight, Fatso. Thanks. I got things to do. Another letter to your girl? Yeah, you guessed it. Lucky girl. Oh, no. Lucky me. See you later, then. Dear Nancy, I can't seem to figure out your letters anymore. I thought you used to like me, but now I can't tell anymore. Like on my last leave when we had such a good time, and then just before I left for camp, you changed and acted as if you were happy that I was leaving. Dan, you've got to learn to have more confidence in yourself. I went to the dance with you only because I wanted to. Well, maybe you could have had a better time with George. He's a good dancer. stop it. Stop beating yourself. Well, I don't understand, Nancy. How can I explain it to you, Dan? Don't you have any idea how much I like you? Must I remind you every moment I'm with you? Well, then, you won't laugh at me? Laugh at you? Yeah. Well, why, Dan? Why in the world? Because I'm asking you to marry me. Oh, Dan. You will marry me? You will? No, Dan. I'm sorry. You don't get rid of me that easily. I'll, I'll try again. Dan Mason, if you don't stop apologizing for every breath you take, I'll... Maybe next time I come home on leave, things will be different. Time can work miracles sometimes. I hope so. All my love, Dan. As the weeks went by, Private Dan Mason hoped for the miracle that would change the feeling of inferiority he carried within himself. But time offered no solution. Lieutenant Ross Damon, the company athletic officer, gave his men a short summary of the athletic activities. (laughs) At ease, men. (laughs) Okay, fine. All right, first, the softball league. We're in third place in the battalion standing. If we beat C Company tonight, we go into a tie for second place. The uh, basketball team, I'm sorry to say, hasn't done so well. We've lost a couple of close ones, though, so there's nothing to be ashamed of. Osborne? Uh, Yes, sir. Congratulations. Man, Osborne just won the battalion tennis tournament and will compete in the All-Army Championship back in the States next week. And, uh, by the way, men, Sergeant Drake, track and field NCO at the athletic field, now waiting for track candidates. That's all, men. Track candidates, huh? Hey, Dan, come on over to the athletic field. Let's see what's cooking. You're not going out for track, are you, fatso? (laughs) Why not? Try anything once. Maybe I can lose some of this weight. Come on. What for? I I don't have to lose any. Well, you got nothing to do. Keep me company. I get lonely running by myself. Well... I promise to take it easy with you. All right. What have I got to lose? <laughs> You're not even drawing a breath, Dan. How are you doing? Well, it wasn't much of a run. Say, Sergeant Drake wants you, Fatso. He's yeah. waving. He wants both of us. Oh, yeah? Uh, we can use you on the track team, Fatso. Oh, me? <laughs> I'm just trying to take off a few pounds. Uh, you're just a big guy, Fatso. Your weight's all right. Here. What's this? A shot put. Now, you take it over to that circle in the middle of the field and start heaving it. I'll huh? be with you in a few minutes. Well, you asked for it, Sergeant. Oh, uh, don't go, Mason. I want to talk to you, too. Oh, sure, Sergeant. Mason, did you ever do any running before? In competition, I mean... No. No, never. I want you to take that lap with Fatso. You got form. Looked like you could really open up if you tried. Well, Fatso's no runner. I I was taking it easy. I could use you in the 440 at the battalion track meet. Well, I've never been in a track meet. Unless I miss my guess, the quarter is right for you. You build, stride, you know how to relax. Well, Sergeant, I, I don't think so. No, nah, I don't think the sprints would suit you. Too short. And a mile... Nah, you know, Myler. I know a quarter Myler when I see one. But, Sergeant... We'll try you out in the battalion track meet, Mason, see how it works out. Well, I'm all confused, Sergeant. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure you I You like wanna... to run, don't you? You must to run like you do. Yeah. Yeah, I like to run. And that'll give us three days of practice before the meet. There's much time. What do I have to do? Be here tomorrow. We'll take some time trials. 
I don't think I'm as good as you think I am. I'll take my chances, Mason. Okay. I'll be here. It's the start of the 440. Mason takes the lead at the first turn. Less than second, maximum third spot. Around the back stretch, Mason ahead by five yards. Hey, look at him piling it on. Dumped up a lead of 12 yards. Hey, but don't go away. The race isn't over. There's Swenson coming up, cutting down the lead to seven, eight, six yards. And there's Maxwell coming from nowhere to take the lead. Into the home stretch, Mason's tying up. He falls back. Maxwell comes on to win. Swenson second, Mason in third place, 15 yards behind the leader. Hey, Dan. I told you, Sergeant, I'm no good. Why'd you run in your sweatpants? Nobody runs that way. What's the difference? I was trimmed, wasn't I? Dan, why didn't you take your sweatpants off? I didn't want to. Hmm? Hey, you must have a reason. What is it? All right, I'll tell you. I burned my legs when I was a kid. They're all scarred up. What else do you want to know? Take it easy, Dan. I'm sorry, Sergeant. You ever hear of a fellow named Glenn Cunningham? He burned his legs just like you did. One of the greatest milers of all time. Oh, it's no use, Sergeant. Pep talks won't help. You saw the race. I'm no good. That's all there is to it. Why bother? Guys like me are a dime a dozen. I know when I'm licked. Now, have you got it out of your system? What do you mean? You finished talking, Dan? Look, I appreciate all you've done for me, Sergeant, but it's different running in competition. All right, Dan, now you listen. I'll talk. Nobody's fault. That's the way I am. Yeah, I saw the race. Dan, you know, before I joined the Army, I was a track coach at an athletic club in the Midwest. I could spot a guy who was a comer after he took two strides. I've seen him come and go, Dan. Olympic champs and the ones who couldn't beat my Aunt Jessica, their lives depended on it. And you get this, Dan. You can cover up your legs with 50 pairs of sweatpants. But you can't hide the fact that you're a runner. If I didn't think so, I wouldn't be talking to you now. Well, what about the race? I goofed off. No, Dan, you didn't goof off. What happened to you happens to any runner who's green, inexperienced. That's the only reason you lost. I ran the best I could. Sure you did, Dan. There's more to running than just using your legs. Got to use your head, too. Well, how do I learn that? Ah, that's what I'm here for. Now, Dan, first thing you did wrong was to go out and set the pace. You burned yourself out in that first 200 yards, left yourself no reserve for your finishing kick. Finishing kick? Yeah, that's that extra something, that, that storehouse you reach in to pour it on in the last 50, 75 yards. I don't know, call it guts, call it a knockout blow, call it competitive spark, whatever it is. When you develop that, you'll know what I'm talking about. Well, maybe I just haven't got it. I was so pooped at the finish, I almost passed out. And another thing you could use, Dan, a little confidence in yourself. You're taking a big burden on yourself, Sergeant. That's my job. Suppose I turn out to be a dud. I'll take that chance, Dan. Forget about me, Sergeant. My name will never be in headlines. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Finishing Kick. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Here's something that's strictly about the birds, the whirly birds, that is, otherwise known as helicopters. Yes, sir, the Army's aircraft mechanics who repair the helicopters are among the most important soldiers in the land, all because there aren't enough of them. Their training skills are needed on every post where Army airplanes are flown. If you have the background to qualify as an Army aviation mechanic, Now's your chance to line up a good job and a good rating for yourself in the United States Army. Even if you don't have the experience but just the inclination, the Army will train you. You'll be an expert after finishing the Army's highly specialized schools. See your local recruiter about your chances for enlisting as an aviation mechanic in the United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Finishing Kick. There's more to winning an athletic contest than receiving a medal or a cup. It involves sportsmanship, a sense of fair play, respect for your fellow man. These qualities are part of the American heritage, whether on the playing field or off. For the soldier athlete, 
It is part of the inner satisfaction that arises from competing in sports, more rewarding than any prize. They're coming out of their corners for the seventh round. Red Weldon leads with the right. Pizarro ducks and lands two hard left to the midsection. Red keeps moving in, throws a left to the jaw on the right of the heart that staggers Pizarro. They go into a clinch. Pizarro lets go with a left and a right that missed. Red connects with two short lefts that stagger Pizarro. Red keeps stalking Pizarro. He senses it's time for the kill. Pizarro's left glances off the side of the face. Red counters with a left and a right and another right. Pizarro is staggered. Another right and Pizarro is down. The referee sends Red to his corner and starts to count. One, two, three, four. Red Weldon wins by a knockout in two minutes and 27 seconds of the seventh round. Oh, Red sure clobbered that guy, huh, Dan? Oh, I knew Red would make it fast, though. He's the kind of guy who was born to win. <laughs> Are you kidding? Why, when Red came into the battalion, he was just a skinny little guy with a lot of nerve and not afraid of hard work. Oh, now, wait a minute. I know Red. I know him longer than you, Dan. You were still on Tennessee maneuvers when he joined the outfit. I remember the first day he walked into this barracks. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. Still Red. I'll tell you a little secret, Dan. Nobody's born to win. If a guy believes in himself laps up all the know-how he can get, and works at what he wants. Well, there's no telling how far he'll go. All I know is Red's different from me, his, his attitude, everything. Now, I'll take an example. You and me. I never held a shot put in my life until two weeks ago. And look at you. Shaved almost five seconds from your time. We're doing all right. Don't kid yourself. Well, you make it sound easy the way you talk. Hey, 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 look at the time. We better shag over to practice. I think I'll skip it, Fat, so I got some you things... You serious? I'll... Nothing doing. You're coming with me if I have to carry you. But fat no so buts or maybes or ifs. You know, we're liable to wind up in the next Olympics. And nobody's going to accuse me of running out on an Olympic champ. Oh, fat so I wish I could dream like you. I'd be a lot better off. Well, why not? It's cheap to dream. And look at the fun you have. Come on, Dan, let's go. On a double. Keep your arms relaxed. That's better, Dan. Lean forward more. Lengthen your stride around the turn. Don't slow up. Elbows a little lower, Dan. Float along. That's the way. Float. Don't strain. Now give it all you got on the straightaway. Dig. Dig. Okay, ease up now, Dan. Take a couple of laps before you hit the shower. I don't want you going stale on me in the meet tomorrow. How do you feel, Dan? I've got a nest of butterflies playing games with my inside. Good. That's the way you should feel. Now, remember, get a good start so you hit that first turn without being bunched up and knocked off stride. Stick close to the leaders for the first 300 yards. Patterson's the guy to watch. Yeah. Last call for the 440-yard final. All right. You got 70 yards of the tape in the last straightaway. Give it the blast, your finishing kick. I don't know how I'm going to remember all that, Sergeant. Don't. You know what to do. Good luck. Oh. What's the matter, Dan? I almost forgot to take off my sweatpants. On your mark. Get set. waiting to take you to the airport, Red. Oh, okay. So long, Dan. See you, fatso. Yeah. You can't lose, Red. I know it. And if Dan says so, Red, how can you miss? Well, just keep rooting for me. It helps. Uh, you're liable to end up in Paris for the NATO meet. <laughs> well, I'll take them one at a time. All I want to do is cop that U.S. Army and Europe type. Now, listen, be sure you're right, Red. I'd like to show people I got a friend who's the best welterweight <laughs> in the Army. <laughs> right. We may not even be here. On the double, Red. There isn't much time. <laughs> so long, guys. Good luck, Red. See you, Red. It's a date. Hey, listen... Were you serious, Fatso? About what? Not being here? Well, you're not just a kid, and I'm serious. Oh, we'll still be here. Oh, no, not if I can help it. 
We go to Paris for the inner service meet next week. Imagine. A month ago, I didn't know a shot put from the side of a war. That Sergeant Drake sure knows how to coach, huh? I just qualified for third place, and I'm getting better all the time. Hey, what are you so gloomy about, Dan? You're a lead pipe cinch to make the team. Oh, I don't know about that, Fatso. They say that Reed, the Navy runner, is a pretty fair runner. He's one of the best in the Middle West before he entered the service. So what? After the way you ran those guys into the ground in the post meet? Oh, I don't know. Well, I know. Guy who breaks the post record by two seconds isn't going to be digging cinders out of his eyes very often. And remember, you're improving all the time. Okay, keep talking, Fatso. One of these days, I'm going to believe you. And one of these days, you're going to believe yourself. Dear Nancy, I haven't heard from you in a week, so I was wondering maybe I said something that offended you in my last letter. I hope you will write me when I go to Paris next week. I will give you my APO number in my next letter. I ran in the track meet I told you about and did pretty good. I was lucky to win, though. The track was just right for me and the weather was nice and hot. I run my best in hot weather. And it seems that you don't like me. What's happening to you? I must find out from the newspaper that you're the Army's best quarter miler and that you're about to tour Europe to compete with the best runners in the world. I thought from your letter that you were being transferred. When are you going to begin to realize that you are as good as anybody else and don't have to hide? I ran my first race before more than 20,000 people. I was scared stiff at first, but once the gun went off, I forgot I was scared. I came in second, which is pretty good, since the man who won is a fine runner and was on the last Olympic team. After the track meet, we went to a German musical comedy, and it was very enjoyable. Tomorrow, we're going on a sightseeing tour of all the famous historical places. And the next day, we... I received your letter from Holland. Everything you're doing sounds so exciting. You're seeing more of Europe than most people see in a dozen cities. It seems as if the Army is giving you a wonderful education. I hope you'll take advantage. I came in second, as usual, in the Paris track meet. I'm satisfied, though. Oh, I'm learning to speak French. Today we saw the Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame, the Arch of Triumph. Reading between the lines of your letter, it seems to me you've lost every race before you start, since you're so satisfied to come in second all the time. Did it ever occur to you that you might be good enough to win? If you Dear Nancy, one more day in Belgium, a stopover in Sweden, and then a week in London. It won't be long before I'm on my way home. Homeward bound! Yippee! <laughs> hey, Dan, wait till the folks at home get a load of my streamlined physique. And don't call me Fatso anymore. Okay, Fatso. World traveler Slim Deegan. That's me, boy. Sonny Moy un verdo, silver plate. That means give me a glass of water, please. In what language, Fatso? Are you kidding? Can you do better? Well, how about this? Parlez-moi d'amour. Redites-moi des choses tendres. Hey, you can really sling it. What does it mean? Oh, it means speak to me of love and tell me all the tender things you know. What's come over you, Dan? Huh? How do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. You're a different guy than what started out on the trip. Well, I hope so. I feel different. I don't know. Can't put my finger on it. Hey, what's this love stuff? Uh-uh, that's not for you, fatso. I'm saving it for my girl. <sighs> Beats me how you've changed. I don't know. I, I can't get over it. You're not the same Dan Mason I used to know. No, I don't feel the same. You look different, the way you stand and walk, straighter, much more sure of yourself. Well, I didn't think it'd show that much. You want to know something else? I took your advice. Advice? Sure. In your letter, you told me not to be satisfied with second place. Well, I wasn't. I didn't come in second in London. I won. I set a new record, too. Oh, that's wonderful, Dan. Well, there's more to it than that. If I keep on improving, there's a good chance I'll make the next Olympic team. Now, what do you think of that? I'm so proud of you. As long as you've given me advice. I'm never going to be satisfied again with anything less than first place with you. I want you to marry me. Oh, Dan. Well, what's your answer? You don't give me any choice. Could be. Could be a girl doesn't want to have a choice. 
Dan. Yes, Nancy. How... Where did this confidence in yourself spring from? You never had it before. Well, I guess I'll have to give credit where it belongs. The Army taught me to develop a strong finishing kick. Hey, Fatso, off your sack. Let's go. Just because dinner's over is no signal to go to sleep. Oh, no, no, not me. I'm not moving. Come on, basketball practice. Uh, basketball? I don't know how to play. Well, neither do I, but the company needs some tall men for the team, and we're no midget. Hey, learning to be a shot putter is one thing, but basketball? No, thanks. Why not? Sergeant Miller used to play with the pros. He says if you've got the height, he'll do the rest on your off-duty hours. Well... Maybe. Now, come on. Everybody's got an equal chance of making the team. Come on. It'll be fun. I could stand losing a few pounds. That's the way to talk. Who knows? We might make the team. Yeah. Who knows? All right, then. Let's go. What are we waiting for? The United States Army instructs, trains, and encourages athletes in all sports in which they may be chosen to represent their army in national and international competition. They are sent at no expense to the government, the money provided by non-appropriated funds such as PX profits and other sources of revenue. The Army sports program develops competitive spirit, an important morale factor in any unit. It teaches self-confidence, teamwork, Builds up the mind as well as the body. Helps make better soldiers and eventually more useful and happier citizens. Young man, if you want to be the sort of man that others look up to, you'll get there fast if you can qualify to join the Army. You'll see a change from the very moment you put on the uniform of a United States soldier. You'll not only stand straighter and taller, you'll walk with the sure tread of a man who knows where he's going. Your training in the Army will give you the confidence of a man with an important job to do. You have to pass the mental and physical examinations in order to get in this oldest military service in our country. But once you're in, you're on the way up. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. There's a recruiter there who'll be very glad to tell you all about what's in it for you when you join the United States Army. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>